12. Not like yet. Here we are. All right. Hey, you 12. Hi, you 12. Um, so it's Miss Pappas. Hello. And Mr. Middleton. And um, we're going to just talk to you about this. Uh, what's this? This is called a, what's this called? This is called a sway. So we're going to send you a link to this. And to access this, you just need a Microsoft account, which most of you should already have. If Everyone not, gets one through their DET portal. If for some reason you can't access it, you just need to sign up for free. So it's an interactive PowerPoint slide, pretty much yeah. online. So what, we got, what we've done is we'll put it on the Google Classroom for you. But to accompany that, just like if it was at school, we're going to um, yeah, set the time, and that's a good idea, so we won't talk for too long. We're just going to talk you through it, really, um, the two of us, and um, that way you can have this as a bit of video. We talk you through Yasa Masa Morimura, and then we're, you've got also the sway to go through yourself. Just, just briefly, your question in the exam is going to be on contemporary art and how contemporary artists, it'll be a, a, an essay question, and it'll be something along the lines of how, I've already told you this, but about how contemporary arts practice um, is aimed to, uh, what, shock the audience? Like, oh no, um, what was it? How, to, how, to, how does contemporary art practice um, cause a reaction in their audience? That's, it'll be that kind of question. Is that right? I think so, it's yeah. along those lines, so, something, yes. something along the lines of how does contemporary art practice, um, contemporary artists and their practice impact audiences. And if you think about the contemporary artists we've done so far, Tracy Yemen, Tracy Yemen um, now we're doing Yasa Masamori Mura, and you know, you might want to look back at um, Duchamp, Duchamp even though he's not a contemporary artist, how his practice influenced these two artists. So anyway, off we go. Um, we'll get in Yasa Masamori Mura. This is Yasa Masamori Mura. This is his artwork called Fatago. So we it? should all recognize what artwork he's appropriating here. We study this in year 11, I believe. Yes. Manet. Manet's Olympia. Um, so we'll move on. This is this is what Yasa Masamori Mura actually looks like. Without makeup and costumes and prosthetics. Yep. Um, and if you watch the videos, that you've got the video YouTube links I in here. I do have one. All Thank right, you. and in there you'll see that he actually paints these backgrounds. He actually, these backgrounds here, he's actually quite a painter, which is quite impressive. And then he puts makeup on himself and what have you. So there's a bit of information here on um, just who he is generally and um, some of the things that he does, but let's, let's jump straight in and start making some notes when it works. Um, so let's let's throw up the heading practice, and um, what are some things that we can say about his practice? I guess uh, he uses photography, photo uh, appropriation, isn't it really? It's appropriation. Is um, manipulation? Yep, manipulation. Um, Recontextualization. So he recontextualizes. He takes, he changes the context. I'm going to run out of, um, hang on. I'm going to run out of uh, writing space there. So he recontextualizes. With a Z or an S, are we going American or are we going Let's Australian? Let's always go Australian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all the artworks. I love his, what's his quote about the tofu? Uh, we have it in the PowerPoint. Let's see. He brings them back to life as things of the present, a bit like reconstituting freeze-dried tofu and serving it up again to eat now. That so is... he brings artworks. I better write the proper quote, hadn't I? So he brings them. We can go back and show them yeah. here. The artworks. Back to life as things of the present. Back to life as things of the present. Like um, re reconstituted tofu. I like that because it's, it's relevant to the fact that he's Japanese, obviously, and tofu is a, a I guess a, a Japanese thing, isn't it? So uh, I like that little quote. All right, so let's get back into the, to the uh, what's it called again? Uh, the Sway. The Sway. All right, so I think we recognize some of these works. Um, all right, so here we've got uh, Yasumasa Morimura. Have, uh, what was this called in, uh, in Conversation with Frida or something it was called, I think. 
And then we've yes. got him as the Mona Lisa, and we've got him as Marilyn Monroe. Interestingly, he doesn't just uh, re appropriate famous artworks. He also appropriates uh, pop culture images from Hollywood. Girl with the pearl earring. Uh, probably not. This work, maybe people might not know. Do you know this work? When I'm talking. Um Velasquez. Yeah, Velasquez. Velasquez. La Meninas. Um, and there's a whole series of these, actually. And there he is as our mate Van Gogh. I will say pipe. it's interesting. In Japanese culture, um, kabuki theatre. So it's part oh, yeah. of the culture. Um, right. Do you want to talk where, a bit about kabuki theatre? Well, it's just where it was theatre for men. And they would dress up in costumes and they would perform. So I think... There's definitely a link with um, Yasumasa's practice and Kabuki. K-A-B-U-K-I. Kabuki. So it is part of his culture, um, men dressing up in costumes. So yeah, the, the, the Kabuki theatre, um, I think, is, is, is a relevant thing. Mm. Um, yeah, because it's part of tradition in Japan, I guess. Kabuki theatre only has men, did you say? And they, That's they right. I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure it was just men that participated in Kabuki theatre. Yeah, which is... Yeah, okay, so there's all these layers that... that where are we going? Up or down? Down. Let's down? See. Okay. Um, all right, so here he is. Uh, should we play this or no? no you you well, can play you this. You girls can watch this in your own time. So it's just a video where you get to see the set. So he's moving in this video and he's talking about why he chose the artist Banco. So please have a watch of this one in your own time. The, of, of, of something that I find interesting in this work, and I think it's a video work, isn't it? In the original, which is, this is Van Gogh's bedroom at Arles, um, Van Gogh's absence in, in that painting mm, is, right. is a powerful part of that painting. And yet in this painting, he's put himself clearly in it. He's combined the two artworks. He has. Oh, yeah, because that's right. There's um, this is Van. There's a self -portrait. Van Gogh did a self portrait as well. You'll and often see sunflowers this. in the background. Oh, yeah. There's sun. Oh, that's in the painting. And oh, on but, the wall here too. So you'll notice that I can't um, draw on the screen. Uh -oh, it's gone but blue. But that's okay. I think we can. What's happened now? Hold on. It went blue. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll keep going. Um, you'll notice that. Um, there we go. In every little picture on the wall these are Morimura's head in everything so it's his appropriation of these artworks not yeah. the originals that's right and you'll often see this half and half color thing going on if you look at Van Gogh's suit here you'll see that in his um, appropriations of Manet anyway we'll move along um, when you use the Miss Miss Pappas is going to show us how to use the um, so we there's right. a stack what? of... This is not right. What's this called again? Sway. Sway. It's sway. sway. It's called a sway. Yep. So this is a stack of paintings. And if you click, you go to the next one. If you click on the top corner, you actually get the artwork details. So I want you to have a look. If there's an artwork you don't know, or who do we think this is, Mr. Middleton? Uh, I think that <laughs> might be um, Einstein, Albert Einstein. So, That's actually Morimura yes. pretending he's Einstein. That's right. So it's Morimura in all of these photos. Che Guevara. Um, I might actually... Who's that? Is that... Okay, so if we don't know who this is, this... Oh, let me go back. This is actually the female alter ego of an artist that we've studied. Let me get back to it quickly. Okay, this is actually um, Rose Salive, which was Marcel Duchamp's alter ego so Marcel Duchamp would actually dress up as a female and he oh, really? had this alter ego and this is Yasuma Samura dressing up as Marcel Duchamp's alter ego so this is Yasuma Samura Mura um being the alter ego of an alter ego of <laughs> Marcel that's Duchamp. right that's right it's really <laughs> interesting so if you don't know who any of those people are um you can click the top corner and you can and get more detail so we're, we're, music in the background. we're we do <laughs> we're, thanks mr lewis mr lewis is saying hi to you 12. we're using our ipad here so um uh this is you're watching how this whole thing interacts on in the ipad i'm noticing just here there's a little interaction thing yeah, we so dare not if touch you click there it just brings them larger and we can go oh, through like that. that again okay and then you click there not that you can see what we but you can see what we what's disappearing okay so the first series uh, well this has been an ongoing series that he's done um what since since the beginning of his practice called the daughters of art daughter of heart history 
Um, interestingly, he's thrown a few male um, artists in this. I just want to talk about this painting a little bit. Yeah, show us how it functions. So you grab that little slider bar, and you, if you slide to the left, you get the original by Edouard Manet. And you can really see the background. So if I see what he's done with these two figures on the side. Oh, they can't see the your side. finger, miss, so you've got to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And okay. let's see what Yasumasa has done. And I think that's him. Put himself in the picture. So I'm just going to quickly talk about this painting very briefly, and, and Miss Pappas is going to jump in any time. This is Edouard Manet's bar at the Folle Berger. Um, Mr. <laughs> Lewis is offering us lollies uh, while we're teaching. Um, <laughs> I'll have a purple one too. Give this Mr. Lewis. The lens not here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's ten minutes. Gosh, this is going to go on forever. Um, it's going to be hard to talk with a lolly in your mouth now. This is Miss. This is uh, Manet's bar at the Folle Berger. Um, so I might just quickly write that down so you can remember it. Um, it's it should also be there on, in the text. So, yep. Uh, bar at the Folle Berger. At the Folle. And I'm going to um, apologise now for my spelling <laughs> because it's not the best. Anyway, um, in, this, in this painting we've got um, a girl... Uh, at a bar, working as a bar bar person. I'm not going to say barmaid. And her reflection is there. And then we have this uh, person in the corner. And that person is actually the artist Manet. But in a way, Manet has put us all in the picture because if you think about what's behind her is a mirror, and then therefore this person is us. We're the viewer. So it's um, a really interesting play on... Um, viewers and and uh, the subject matter because where everything in this painting is actually technically if you think about it behind us because it's a mirror now I know that um, this girl here um, is I think you know we all know that man I painted prostitutes she's actually working as a barmaid she's got quite an indifferent look on her face I did a bit of reading on this painting and the the implication of this painting is that she's a prostitute and Manet is, prop is propositioning her. Sex work. Um, the f <laughs> Mr. Lewis, we're being recorded here. And up in, up in the top left-hand corner of this painting, I always love these uh, Patrice, oh, wow. trapeze artist. So um, these French bars, it's quite a lavish painting with all these sort of, you know, There's bottles and things. There's performances happening, yeah. the Moulin Rouge. And it, and it, and it preempts preempt Impressionism Holy because shit. Impressionism... Um, came after Manet and they paint light and what have we got here a mirror and how does a mirror operate with light and we've got all these blobs of paint behind us remember we talked about when we did impressionism these aren't these aren't people anymore they're blobs of paint we make them people as viewers um, so how do I um, there's there's Mori Mura's uh, interpretation of it if I go back and um, we slide this now this is called Daughter of Art History Theatre A because there's another one that accompanies it, and that is Theatre B, That's, mm. which is a bit more of a cheeky picture, I guess. Um, and so what, is, what are the implications here? Well, we know that she was a prostitute, and here it is, you know, clothed in politeness. And it's almost like Morimura has um, unpacked what's really going on in this painting, do you think? That's right. No longer are things so secretly coded that's right they're not hidden anymore she it's this this un this um unveils what she really is which is and a, which we is can a, yeah that's right and we can see if we zoom into those hands these mannequin hands and it's all yeah with the wires poking out with the wires poking out yeah so um it's almost like she's taken her arms because you see the uh the color difference with the arms and the shoulders and uh it's almost like um, she's taken her arms out of those hands and there she is unclosed and, you know, covering up what, what she may or may not be prepared to do. Um, you can read this, um, you can yeah, roll it along. Okay, then his next series of work was an inner dialogue with Frida Kahlo. And uh, this, is, this is Frida Kahlo's uh, self-portrait with Thorn Necklace and Dead yeah, Hummingbird. Yes, so if we click here, we get the... We get the information. So... On the left we have Mori Mura's version and on the right we have Frida Kahlo's The Original. The Original Version. And we know that Frida Kahlo was famous for self-portraits and she's a bit of an iconic sort of portrait artist from Mexico. And if you know, if you need to know a bit more about Frida, you go and, uh, you go and Google her, I guess. There's a great little conversation here that Mori Mura made up 
that he would have with his with Frida. I just find it really interesting that um, this final statement where Mori Mura says, "I never look at the real thing." I thought it over, but decided to keep my usual practice. That is to take only a very limited amount of information and use that information to create works. So he's a little bit irreverent. That might be a good word to talk about. Um, he's a little bit irreverent in the way he kind of plunders art history. So um, irreverence. Approach. He's not particularly um, awe-inspired by the works. These, I love these works. This is where Frida cut her hair off. There's all sorts of information about what you want to do is go and Google that work and then come back and look at the Morimura. There's a fair bit of information here for you. And then um, we'll come to Fatago. So this is also a famous artwork by Manet. He's done a few versions of uh, Manet's Olympia now. That's right, they're all slightly different. So if we have a look at what are the differences between these two? Well, he did he did the top one back in the eighties, and I think the bottom one there, where he's wearing the more traditional, more traditional costume, geisha girl that's headpiece. Right. He's, this is when he's older. So um, I like the way he's replaced the uh, the black, the famous black cat. And what is it in this new version? Well, he's taken out the potency ah. of that image, and it's got one of those. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> these little what are those hand waving lucky cats or something? Yeah. Called? Um, okay, and. In the, uh, what does Fatago mean? Let's Miss, Miss Pappas is looking up Fatago. There's a, there's, there's a relevance to the word Fatago. Um, I think Fatago has a meaning. How about you guys, homework for you. What is the meaning of Fatago? In relationship to Morimura. Don't just go, <laughs> what does Fatago mean? But it's gotta be in what in relevance to uh, Morimura's work because there's a company called Fatago I found out but you can actually google and look at my handwriting it's pretty bad um, you can actually google this and, and go and find out what what Fatago means we're not going to give you that answer bit of homework for you um, oh where am I now Is, Ooh, oh no, no you're in the right um, place uh oh hold on we've made a mess of it there it is and yes keep me signed in thank you very much hold on and we'll just wait for there yeah, we'll be back all right, so we were down to um, yeah, we're down to Fatago and Manet's Olympia. Um, and what's relevant, I think, worth noting in this work is that Manet was obsessed with Japanese art, as all the uh, French impressionists That's right. were. And hello, who, where's Morimura from? Japan. So um, he's playing with culture. He's playing with gender. He's playing with sexuality. So a lot of um, a lot of things he's dealing with in this painting and all of his works. All right, so, so let's get some of the implications of his practice is what, if I could spell, <laughs> what's Eastern Asian, what's Western, what's male, what's female, remember that Japanese um, theatre, kabuki. kabuki. What's male, female? Was What's, um, how do we, we're not going to say gay and straight, but gender and sexuality. He's ambiguous, isn't he? He blurs the boundaries, blurs the lines between these two, are they opposites? These two, um, male, female. Yep. Eastern, Western. How, um, how do you spell ambiguous? I don't know. If you don't know what ambiguous means, go look it up. Google it. Okay, so um, I think we might move on. Here you've got um, some information on Van Gogh. But, you know, one of the things about Morimura is it's funny. And I think the humorous element and the irony in it is Absolutely. actually part of, an important part of um, his work. An important part of postmodern work, actually. Uh, this is Bruegel's uh, The Parable of the Blind. Yeah, what are we doing? We're shrinking. Yep, Parable of the Blind, which is based on a Bible um, parable um, said by the figure of Christ where he talks about the blind leading the blind if you follow um, greedy people and, and so all the evils of society. What's happening? In, where are these people headed? Well, they're headed into the ditch, into the abyss. 
So and if we zoom into the eyes. Into the eyes, yep. Can we and they're see? all blind. They're all blind. And, and, and they're falling. And in a, in a Christian sense, where is hell? Underground. So that's all quite relevant. And then here he is, the blind leading the blind. Oh, blinded, blinded by the, by light, the sorry. light, Blinded by the light, which was a famous uh, pop song. Um, tap this button to what? I don't know. And what's ha- what are they holding in their hands? We see brand names like Chanel yeah, and they're Hermes bags and so, money. And money. I love I love the soldier blinded by his hand grenades. I love the artist. I love this artist. Blind, yeah, the, the artist is blinded uh, by the paint brushes. Yes, absolutely. I'm not quite sure about the the, the teddy bear kid, but ah, oh, oh, it's got a. Look, Japan, Japan um, in the 80s and 90s became a highly consumerist society, as we know, and uh, quite obsessed with uh, money and uh, brands and everything. And so this is his little social commentary on possibly where he thinks Japan is going. And I think it's interesting that he has, I think he's kept the, the, the landscape, the background is the same. It's, he hasn't updated the background. So he's put these contemporary figures in this... Um, old Flemish is it Flemish yeah. landscape and he paints his own backgrounds as you'll see in the video links all right Mona Lisa um, Leonardo da Vinci famous for the Mona Lisa um, she was the daughter of um, one of his patrons he carried this painting with everywhere he went this is Leonardo um, as he traveled around Europe and he constantly worked on this painting he never actually gave it to the to the patron um, and he, um, he just was never satisfied with it. At the same time, he's famous for going into the morgues at night and doing anatomical studies. He'd do his own dissections. And a lot of medical uh, textbooks still have some of these um, famous drawings in them. So um, I like the way uh, Morimura has brought Mona Lisa together by Leonardo. And then um, we might just shrink that. Yeah. And, and I'm not quite sure what he's doing here, but he's made... He's, he's, He's uh, Again, he's derobed her, made her naked, and it's him, by the way. Well, sort of him, his head, and uh, he's made her pregnant, and then he's sort of made reference to Leonardo's anatomical drawings here. That seems to be something he likes to do. Yeah, he With does. Van Gogh, he combines a few different artworks and he puts them together. He does. He jams to tell them this together. Story. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Um, two of Leonardo's artworks or parts of his practice together. I homage to... Right. Getting straight to Slaughter Cabinet, because this is a pretty major work, and you've got a scan of a textbook in this. Um, this so is, is a... this a photograph, or is this one an object? Well, this is, this is the famous photo it's based on from the Vietnam War, which is a bit of journalism. Um, this artist's name is Eddie Adams, and you probably might want to go and Google a story behind this photo. There's quite a story behind it. And... Um, and there's some questions here which we're going to put up as a Google Doc and you can answer back to us. But um, America, Vietnam War was the first what we call TV war because everything that was done on during the war was filmed by journalists then and there and then it was broadcast into people's lounge rooms every night in America. And it became really quite violent and we got quite desensitised to it and got quite used to it. So um, this here is a Buddhist altar and he's put in it his appropriation of the famous Eddie Adams photo. It's called Execution or Street Execution or something. Um, and uh, as usual, Morimura is every one of the characters in it. It's set in downtown Osaka and it looks a bit like a TV set. However, it's a Buddhist altar. Um, so we make those connections between Buddhism, um, Asia, um, American sort of involvement in that Asian war. Um, and the way it was all broadcast in everyone's TVs in their lounge rooms every night and how immune to the violence we became and we still are really you got anything to add to that? I think I, I think it's interesting how he has so many different influences and he brings them all together to create yeah one artwork he does and they operate on a whole little level. Mm. So you've got to be able to make the connections. You've got to be able to go Buddhist altar, Asian artist, Asian war, um, TV, um, and, and, and sort of put all those layers together when you talk about... A lot of layers, that's right. Morimura, yep. All right, I think we're, I think we're pretty good. I think we're done, aren't we? So, yeah, so just the questions. We have four questions. Um, 
we will create a Google Doc for you to type these into as an assignment and you can send those back to us. All right. Okay. That's all. Make sure you come in and get your materials and stuff as well. Yes, all come right. in, grab your body of works. Okay. Bye See you, you